Okay, it's recording. Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. This is uh, Kwa again. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous video, I'm going to make uh, a short video talking about my experience of taking the NCLEX and sharing with you guys what are the resources that I have used in order to prepare me to take the NCLEX exam, okay? Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. Keep it short and sweet. Let me share my screen. Okay, so this is my screen right here. Okay, let's start from the beginning. All about the NCLEX exam. Let me zoom myself bigger. Cool. Okay, so NCLEX exam. I know it's scary. I know it is incredibly um, anxious thinking about the board exam, but I assure you guys, you guys will be okay. I was in the same boat. I was really worried. Nobody can tell me nothing and lessen my anxiety. So I completely understand what you guys are going through and um, are trying to prepare for. It is a stressful semester and it is a stressful class transition. Um, I just wanted you guys to know that I, I understand completely and I feel what you guys go have going through. Um, but you guys will be okay. I am okay, so will you. And I study the same exactly how you study. So we will be okay. Most of my friend, I have any of my friend passed. I don't know anybody that failed the exam yet. So before we just go ahead and get started, I just want to get, let you guys know that the auto failing is incredibly low. Um, the NCLEX is designed for you to, to pass, not to pass, but it designed to, to, to make sure that you are a safe nurse. So it's not trying to trick you or trying to fail you. It's make sure, just making sure that you are trying to be a safe nurse, okay? So um, like I mentioned in the previous video that the, um, the need to know content video part one, that the NCLEX exam is, um, it's just making sure that you are a safe nurse and um, I shouldn't really have a, a brain for I just forget everything I was about to say. <laughs> um, but anyway, it comes to me later. So let's just go ahead and move forward. So let's talk a little bit my experience. So I'm not that like fancy or, or super smart and get stopped at 75 question and that's okay. I was uh, hoping that I would get a stop at 75 question, but I did not. So um, I got stopped at 90 questions. Obviously I was disappointed and I was nervous right after I finished the test because I don't know what does that result mean and whether I pass or not. And everybody I watched on YouTube pass like 75 questions or so, and I have that expected like, okay, I, I, sh I probably should pass a seven of questions. I do tutoring. I, I, I have, ex I expose myself to content constantly. So I should pass and I should stop, be stopped at seven of question, but it's not. I, I, I'm confident in my test. Um, obviously, um, I don't know the result uh, immediately after I took the test, but um, I was anxious as well. I got 90 questions, okay? I got stopped at question 90. Um, it's my my exam personally was really happy on select to apply. I have about 30 to 35 questions of select to apply. And apparently people are saying that it's a good thing to have a lot of hard question and select to apply are considered hard questions. So usually uh, they start you off with like some of the more easier question. My personally, the first 20, 10, 20 question in my NCLEX exam was uh, pretty straightforward, really fundamental. Um, not too easy, but it's fundamental. It's the content uh, relating to mostly like safety and not really critical thinking yet. It's like, if you know, you know. So more like infection control, uh, some of the um, um, crutches and crane stuff, and also um, diabetes stuff. So, so those are like the first 10, 15 questions, then it get progressively harder from my test. Um, and I got a lot on select to apply. It is heavy on prioritization as well. My test was heavy on prioritization. I got about 20 questions at least about prioritization. Basically, it's just asking that which patient you are assigned or you was getting report from uh, for, for these four patients who would you prioritize first 
or which task is uh, the most prioritized for this particular situation or event. Um, so some of the topic that I remember that I would test it on. So infection control, I have question about airborne precaution, contact precaution, as well as enteric precautions, uh, which is C diff. So it's really easy. Just make sure you wash your hand with soap and water. Do not just use alcohol because that will be wrong. Uh, PPE, of course, no to no, no donning, no doffing, uh, sterile glove, when to use sterile technique. I mentioned that in the need to know content part one. So please check it out. Um, and room assignment. So room assignment is um, usually is like the patient similar group of disease or similar disease can be groomed together. Um, next, we have, uh, I have uh, some diabetes mellitus question. Uh, they asked me about like the mixing between uh, the um, rapid and short acting insulin medications and also um, like the different medical emergency, like less than 60 uh, blood sugar level, like what will you do? So you just like give the patient apple juice uh, as well as um, some, ah, I remember there was a question, uh, it's like, um, which one is the wrong answer? So um, like, which one need correct? So like this patient it, uh, was diagnosed with type one diabetes and he's, um, he was saying that he need to increase his insulin intake when he's increasing exercising, which is completely wrong because exercising can lower the blood sugar level. So that is a wrong statement. So that statement need follow up. So that's what I picked. Um, peripheral vascular disease, no PVD, no PAD and risk factor, no sign symptom of PVD, no sign symptom of PVD and the position, what do we do? We dangle the feet or we elevate the feet. So please know that. Uh, OB high risk pregnancy. I have these two questions, shoulder dystocia, remember, McRobert maneuvers and prolab course. So in my questions, they were asking something about the nurse was uh, examining the um, the nurse was examining the the the, the female um, vaginal part of the area and felt a pulsating mass. So what would you do? So you put the patient in knee to chest positions and you uh, immediately uh, go to uh, emergency for C section for emergency C section. Yeah. Next, we have lab abnormality. So um, I was really surprised. So the lab abnormality, they didn't ask us, they didn't ask me anything like hypokalemia or hyper, hypercalcemia or anything like that. What they asked me was PT level. And I was really, I was really nervous about this question because I wasn't sure about the PT level, but thank God I got it right because I came home and checked on Google. So they gave me a, a PT level of like, 15 or 16 or something like that. And they asked like, um, so they gave me a bunch of lab and the PT was like 16. And they asked like, which lab were abnormal? So uh, PT was the one that I picked because this was out of range. The regular range is like 11 to 13 or something. So make sure you guys know that. Make sure you guys know like some of the PT, INR, PTT, those can, can come on the NCLEX. You never know, uh, came on mine. Um, and also there's one, they have a picture, uh, they uh, will ask you guys like which mineral uh, will be good for uh, wound healing and um, uh, thanks to the practice review on Archer that I did, uh, I know that it's Zinc, Zinc so Z-I-N-C, Zinc, that uh, mineral is good for wound healing. And they was like giving me a picture and they would give me like a bunch of like vitamin a, vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc, uh, which one is good for wound healing? So I pick zinc. Uh, yeah, and also know like the parameter the range of like all the labs. I really recommend that. Uh, no natural glycerin, adenosine, digoxin, lithium, SSRI, met, methotrexate, magnesium sulfate. These are some of the, uh, the, the one that I remember, but obviously there will be more. There was more, but I can't remember all of them. But please, at least know this. Um, yeah, no. Uh, and then I have some question about SVT, AFib, VTAC, polis. Um, SVT treatment, um, I think so, yeah. The treatment for SVT is um, um, cold water to the face. 
Okay, remember that cold water to the face, uh, vagal maneuvers, um, and also um, we give them adenosine. Okay, uh, AFib. Uh, VTAC polis, AFib is at risk for stroke because it can uh, cause a uh, dis dislodge of a clot from the heart. VTAC polis, what do you do? Defibrillation, okay? Defibrillation is not just only for VFib. VTAC polis, defib, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, also I think I have atropine as well. And atropine is good for symptomatic um, sinus bradycardia. If the patient have bradycardia uh, and they show signs symptom of it, then we give them atropine, okay? Uh, other than that, that, that is mostly what I remember, but obviously there's so much more. Definitely know endocrine, you guys. Know your hormones, know the diseases. Hi, um, Cushing's Addison disease, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. Those are really important to know. You guys, they will ask the question. I can't remember all of them, but I hope, um, some of the stuff that I remember will help you guys better prepare and kind of like um, understand what the test like. Um, so yeah, so let's move on to the next section where I will share with you guys what I do to prepare for the test. Uh, best resort to use, so Archer Review, do one to two assessment a day and make sure to read the rationale and write them down. So personally, I did not use you world, I did not use anything else. The only thing I use is Archer Review. During the transitional class, I use uh, Passpoint, but after I graduate, I focusing on Archer Review only. And this is what I only use to study, okay? Uh, so personally, I feel like it's amazing. It's really drained my brain. Uh, I do like two uh, assessment a day, uh, and sometimes I do the cat practice CAT exam, and I feel that it's super helpful for me. It trained my brain. It gave me the sense of um, doing the test, uh, and yeah, and I feel the test here in Archer Review, the questions are really, really similar to the NCLEX exam, and I highly recommend you guys uh, use Archer Review. Uh, People who bought you were, I recommend you guys, you use word, you were as well. You were is really, really good on um, providing you guys with content review. However, uh, for me, I believe that I have a strong content base. So Archer Review, doing practice question. My personal belief is that when I do, when you do a lot of practice question, you get the, the material. So that's what I think. So I've been only do practice question and practice test and practice question and practice test uh, uh, every day. And then I read rationale and write them down. So according to Archer Review, having four consecutive high or very high on the test, will eat, you guys will have a 99 chance percent of passing. And the practice cat, I do two to three times a day, I mean, uh, a week. And then it will show you guys that um, whether you guys pass or not. Uh, so it's really good as well. Then Mark Klimek, I did listen to him. I didn't think that he was that helpful during the NCLEX, but he definitely having a lot of good tips and uh, information that it is good to know. Uh, I, there are, he's had 12 lectures. Uh, I don't recommend you guys listen to all of them. It's good if you guys have time driving, listen to him, 12 of them, perfectly fine. Um, but uh, personally, I recommend lecture 12, which is the prioritization delegation staff management. That's the first one you need to hear. And the first one you guys need to like really comprehend and like know the material. Lecture five, lecture seven, and lecture six. So diabetes mellitus, diabetes insipidus, insulin, thyroid, adrenal, drug toxicity, hyaluronia, and dummy syndrome. So these four lectures are the what I recommend you guys to listen to because I felt that it is most helpful for the NCLEX exam. Um, personally, I didn't, um, I, I listened to him and I, I have like all of whatever he say in written format and I will put it in the description box down below for you guys so you guys can have access to it, okay? Uh, it's free and it's, uh, it's for me. Um, so I hope it will be helpful. And uh, I recommend you guys listen to four of this lecture. And yeah. Next, uh, also what I use is called the NCLEX Tutor Book. I ordered this and it helped me so much with getting back my content and learning vocabulary and all the key things to remember. Let me show you guys a sneak peek of this book. 
uh, let me make the this a little bit bigger or let's just stop sharing for a moment, okay? Okay, so this is the NCLEX Tutor book. This is the book that I bought. I ordered from this uh, YouTube uh, lady. She's she's a tutor uh, that tutoring NCLEX exam. And this book, I feel that is really helpful because they have like all the content breakdown from the NCLEX that will be on the NCLEX. For example, fundamental management of care, pharmacology, adult health, mental health, maternity, and pediatric. It's like 50 bucks. It's uh, expensive for um, a pretty short book, but it's really straight to the point and straightforward. She breaks down all of the information like this. And what I like is she has pictures all over. Um, and, um, and personally, I do believe that it's, it's pretty good. Um, she has picture of, of of what is what, so like I can best, better visualize everything. Um, this book is really helpful for me right now too, even when becoming a nurse. Um, she, by the way, she doesn't sponsor me or anything. I hope she watches this video and sponsor me, but um, I doubt that. Um, but yeah, she have different position that we need to study. She have um, how to insert an IV, uh, all step are breaking down in pictures. Um, and infection control, everything is on here. Uh, so I recommend you guys take a look at the book out. Um, her YouTube channels probably is the NCLEX Tutor. And um, you guys can order this book from her website, uh, the NCLEXTutor.com, the NCLEXTutor.com. And again, this is a, um, She's an RN, she has a master's degree, and her name is Justine Buick. Okay, let's get back, share my screen. Okay, so next, another resources that I use is obviously YouTube channel. Nexus Nursing, these are the two must watch video from her. She's amazing, you guys, she share with you guys. I like her because she, she have uh, practice questions and I watch the video and I pause and I answer and, and, and check it back with her if I got it correct. And I love the way she explained the material and I love um, how, how it's like jump right in. So I recommend you guys, these are two videos you guys must watch, must watch before taking the test. Okay, so before the exam, you guys please come early. I remember my exam, I come super early. I have, I take my exam at one, I came at 11. Um, I know that you guys don't have to do that, but come at least one hour early because the scanning process is very uh, long. I would say um, they check everything on your body and uh, they scan the palm of your hands and everything like that. Uh, and they make sure you guys turn off your phone. You guys have to tap in front of her. And um, yeah, so just come early. Uh, a good tips that uh, I always do before any exam is drink or eat dark chocolate food and eat lightly. I don't eat a lot uh, before my exam. I just had like uh, two omelet and then I drank this dark chocolate from Starbucks uh, and I love it. And according to research, when you drink dark chocolate or eat dark chocolate before exam, your brain is stimulated and you guys have a, a, a clearer mind. So that's what I recommend. Uh, definitely breathe. I know it's anxious and very scary. Uh, do not bring too much stuff because the storage is limited and you guys, you guys don't get to use it. Um, yeah, just bring yourself. There's everything there. You guys don't need to even bring an uh, earplug. They will have it over there for you guys. Do not bring food. Do not bring food. Don't have time to eat it, first of all, and you guys will be probably too anxious to eat it anyway so and it would be awkward to to bring food so don't uh so you again you guys will pass the order of the failing exam of the test is incredibly low the exam is only to make sure that you are going to be a safe nurse i've said it so many times so um i think i checked it online the the, the uh, failing rate is only 15 percent of the total nation on the first time taker. So you guys have 85% of passing the test. So I'll take my odd. I mean, I, I'll take my chance. 
uh, mentally prepare for any situation. If it doesn't stop at 75 question, keep continuing being focused and do not panic. Uh, read the question slow, carefully, answer straight to the point, close your eye and breathe deeply after every 10 question and say, I trust myself, I trust the process. Uh, so yeah. Okay, you guys, so that is my experience of taking the NCLEX exam. If you guys want to know how to like look up your result and everything, you guys can look up on, you guys can take a look at, check out my video on passing the NCLEX reactions. Um, uh, I go everything on the computer there. So I hope you guys check it out and yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Um, if you guys need anything, ask me uh, directly uh, through my Facebook, Instagram, anything. I'll, I'll, I'll try to answer if I have time. Uh, and yeah, good luck to you all. And there'll be more in content coming. I really appreciate you guys watching the channel and subscribing. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me sh stop sharing. Bye.